So our mixture of chlorides has been sitting in the fridge for a couple of days and it's now time to analyze it by gas chromatography mass spectrometry. So I'm going to take off my parafilm. It says in the lab manual that you're going to transfer half a milliliter of this to a PC mass spec sample vial. And we need a cap on there. It's got a red Teflon side towards the product and a white silicone side on the top. Um, but it's not really necessary to measure. Uh, we've got plenty. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to fill it up to that second line. Being careful not to take any of the solid from the bottom, of course, because we don't want to plug the syringe. So it's probably a little bit more than a half milliliter, but that's fine. You'll notice whenever I do a transfer, I always have the mouths of the two things that I'm transferring from and to right close to each other so I don't spill or drip. So I've got my little mass spec vial. I'm done with these chlorides as long as the analysis works, so I'll set those aside. Probably won't need them again. And we can put this back. Vials live here under the bench. So now we're going to take this PC mass spec vial. Which I'm just going to put a CL on there for chlorides since I'm the only one running it. Not so critical. You will, of course, want to use your lot number. And we'll take this across the hall to the GC mass spec. So the GC mass spec instrument is here. Uh, it's composed of a gas chromatograph part with an oven, uh, which has a column inside it. And then the mass spec, the mass selective detector is over here. And we have an auto sampler uh, with an auto injector. So we're just gonna put our sample into a known slot in the rack. And if we pull that off, you can see there's a number one there. So this is the first rack. And then you'll look that it says 1, 6, 11, 16, 21, 5, 10. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I just need to know where I'm putting it so I can tell the sampler. So I'm going to put it in slot number 10. And I'm going to insert that. This one here is rack number 2, which means that instead of starting at 1, it actually starts at 26. So it goes 26 through 50. And then rack 3 goes 51 through uh, 75, etc. So we have 150 total that we can run. I also want to make sure that my second vial here, there's three different vials, one, two, and three different slots there. I want to make sure that number two actually has dichloromethane in it. I refilled this earlier this morning. Pull that rack out so you can see it. So we've got a solvent and a, and a waste, a solvent and a waste. So this is number, this is A, this is B, and this is C. I'm going to be experiencing with just B, which is dichloromethane. Uh, C is hexane, and I think A was methanol, but obviously you can see that's not in there right now. So I'm going to reset that so that it'll put that back where it belongs. So we know we're in spot 10. That's important. So now we can sit at the computer. And right now, it's at the top menu. So there's data acquisition, data analysis, batch processing, system configuration, tuning, etc. Really, the only things you're ever going to need to deal with are data acquisition and batch processing. If all of you were running, we would be setting this up as a batch file. So we would go to batch processing. This is an old batch file, so we'd close it with the lower uh, X there. Okay. Go to batch processing. And then we want a new batch file. So file, new batch file. And that would enter the normal kind of template. Right? Here's where we put our spectrum number and our data file. We actually only need one row. So I can highlight those and I can delete all of those. Right? So we know that we put it in vial number 10. This is where we would put our spectrum number, DCL-10- I don't know, 44, 
1946C. I didn't put it in my lab notebook. And it would be the first spectrum. All right, so there's your initials, your notebook number, the page, uh, compound A, B, or C, first, second, or third compound, and then your final number. The data file, if I click this little down arrow, that will enable me to go to my folder. And I've got 2020 fall lab in there. Right? And I'm gonna call this mixture of chlorides. Data description, right? mixture of monochlorination products from reaction of sulfuryl chloride and methyl cyclohexane. That's already in there for you. I don't have to modify that. The injection volume here is 0.1 microliter. That's correct. It says one microliter in your lab manual, but it is wrong. It should be 0.1 microliter. And then the method file is called relative reactivities. I want the new one, relative reactivities 2020. And then the tuning file should be whatever the most recent date is, which was March 2019 was when it was run. So most of it's already set for you. Now, before I can run this, I want to delete row three and I want to delete row one so that the only thing in there is my sample. File 10, there's my sample name, my data file, data description, injection volume. I'm gonna save this batch file. Save batch file as, and I'm actually gonna put it in my folder. So data, DC lever, 2020 fall lab. I'm gonna call this relative reactivities batch. So before we actually start this, I'm gonna to go to the acquisition mode here instead of the batch table and show you a little bit about uh, what this method looks like. So we have our auto sampler here and it's set to rinse with the solvent, the dichloromethane three times before it runs. And then after it's done, it will rinse it twice. It's gonna flush with the sample twice to make sure there's nothing in the syringe but the sample. And if we go to the advanced mode here, it'll tell us that the solvent we're washing with is just B right, just the dichloromethane and not the methanol and the hexane. And it's gonna wash with six microliters at a time. And this pumping time, right, that's to get rid of air bubbles. It's gonna pull up the solvent, six microliters of it, and then quickly eject it, pull it up and eject it, pull it up and eject it. That'll get rid of air bubbles. On the GC tab, we can see that the column oven temperature is gonna start at 75. The injection port is held at 250 degrees, which is well above the boiling point of all our materials. So it'll evaporate everything very quickly. Right? And then it'll ramp, right? After holding for five minutes at that 75 degrees, we're gonna ramp at 20 degrees C per minute until it hits 110. So there's that little ramp. And then we're gonna ramp really fast at 50 degrees C per minute until it goes all the way up to about 250. It's gonna be a nine and a half minute total run. So it's gonna stay at 75 for a while and then it's gonna rapidly ramp up That'll make this run nice and short. The other thing you'll see on here is that the column is called an SH, just RXI 5 SIL, and it's a special mass spec variety. RX stands for ResTech, that's the company we bought it from. Um, 5 SIL, the 5 is the key part there. What that means is it's 5% diphenyl, and the remainder, 95% dimethyl polysiloxane. That's the the stationary phase that coats our capillary GC column. So it's 5% diphenyl, 95% dimethyl polysiloxane. It's a 30 meter long column, 0.25 micrometer, or a micrometer thickness of the, of the stationary phase. And the inner diameter of that little capillary is 0.25 millimeters. What that column looks like is 30 meters of glass capillary that's wrapped around. This is a different column. And so the inner diameter, the, the, the inside of this tube is 0.25 millimeters across. And it's then spun glass that's uh, kind of hung in there so that it's inside the oven. 
you know, kind of a marvel of engineering that you could get a uniform 0.25 millimeter inner diameter over 30 meters of glass column and then coat that with 0.25 micrometer thick uh, stationary phase, which is the silicone, the polysiloxane. Separates mostly on boiling point. Uh, not much polarity in that silicone. So you'll want to know this temperature program, 75, initial temperature, hold for five, rise at 20 degrees C per minute to 110, then rise at 50 degrees C till 247.5, so it's a nine and a half minute run. You'll want to know the details of the column. And then over here, we need to know the injection temperature of 250, and we need to know that the split ratio is set at 150. We're gonna inject 0.1 microliters, which is not very much, and then only one 150th of that is actually going to go onto the column. It takes very little sample uh, for this column uh, to separate. And then we need to know that the column flow is 0 0.19, 0.91 milli per minute, or that the linear velocity is 35 centimeters per second. Those two things are tied. So our total flow is 139.9 milliliters per minute of helium, which is the carrier gas. Uh, but only 0.91 milliliter per minute going through the column. The rest is coming right out the purge valve. And then the mass selective detector, the ion source temperature is set at 200, the interface temperature is set at 250, and we have a solvent cut time. So for three and a half minutes when the dichloromethane, or when the, the parent methyl cyclohexane is coming through, uh, since we had that in excess, we're not even gonna turn the detector on. We're only gonna turn the detector on after the, the starting material is gone. So we're, we're, we're actually going to collect data from four minutes to nine minutes between 40 uh, AMU, atomic mass units, this is the mass over charge ratio, between 40 atomic mass units and 200 atomic mass units, which is where our compound lies. Right? The rest of this is not that important, but we need to know that we're scanning from 40 to 200 atomic mass units and between four and nine minutes and we need to know the interface and ion source temperature. All of this information is available from the data file at the end. So that's the method that we're running. I'm gonna to go to my batch table and I'm just gonna hit start. And the GC mass spec is gonna do its thing. Right now it's sending the instrument parameters over. It's telling the auto sampler that I put my sample in uh, slot number 10, so it will know where to get it. And then once it's actually got those parameters set, it will activate the auto sampler. So the sample arm will come and grab the vial. And it will put that vial into the rack. And then it'll pull that under the syringe. It's now rinsing the uh, syringe with the dichloromethane. It's going to do that three times to make sure the syringe is clean. It's been a while since this instrument has been used, so I suspect the syringe is clean anyway. Now it's going to rinse it twice with the sample to make sure that what's in there is our sample and not the residual dichloromethane from the cleaning. And it just moves it and puts that into one of the random waste containers. And it's gonna do that twice. There's six microliters at a time. And now it's going to pull our sample up and it's gonna pump three times to get the air bubbles out. So you can see that it's going up and down pretty rapidly. Now it's gonna pull that 0.1 microliters up. It's gonna push it through the septum, depress the plunger, and start the run. And now it's gonna go ahead and wash the uh, syringe a couple of times with dichloromethane just to make sure it's clean for the next run. And it's going to return the sample vial to slot number 10 
And if this batch file were set up so that it were running 14 or 15 samples overnight, when it was done with this first sample, it would go to the next vial. So you can now see that it's running. We can actually put our batch file out of the way so we're not seeing that. And right here on the retention time, it says it's 0.970 into a nine minute. Right. Now it's one minute into that nine minute run. Uh, but it hasn't started collecting data yet. Once it starts collecting data, which it will do at four minutes, we'll be able to see the intensity as it, as it scans across those peaks. And we're expecting to see, um, well, we're expecting to have eight products made, but we will probably not actually be able to separate all eight of them cleanly because the boiling points are really not that different. Down here in this white region, it will show us the mass spectrum of whatever is being uh, detected at the time. Okay. So, and we can move that back and forth, right? So we can see the instrument parameters down here if we want them, but I don't really need to see those. So this is where the chromatogram will appear, and this is where the mass spectrum will appear. And GC says it's running, the mass spec says it's running. We just got another two minutes to wait before we start seeing some data coming off. I hope the camera is actually showing you what it needs to show you. Two point six four minutes into our nine minute run. And I'm going to go ahead and turn the camera off because there's no reason for us to just sit and watch this. We'll just let this.